So what's the plan for field day 2022? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So let's take just a few minutes today and talk about my field day setup for 2022. Now I'm going to break this up into three different sections. Uh, the first one is going to be my setup and kind of the gear and whatnot that I will be running. I'm going to talk about some of the upgrades that I've done to the RV in preparation for this upcoming field day. And I'm going to talk about some of my goals for 2022. So starting off, I'm going to go back and use the Yezu 857D that I have in the shack. It's been a while since I've used that uh, radio. I haven't been getting it out into the field very much lately, and I just think it's time to show the 857 a bit of love. And I'm going to pair my in-fed half-wave antenna with the 857. That's going to be one of my radio setups. And on that radio, I'm going to be running FT8 as my primary mode. Now, hold up. Don't go down in the comments typing just yet. I know, I know, I say all the time that I'm much more of a JS8 call fan than FT8. However, when it comes to summer field day, if you want to rack up some contacts, FT8 is where the action is. JS8 call I save for winter field day where FT8 is not allowed by the rules. Of course, I will be making the standard wind link connections throughout field day and I actually have a challenge coming up. I'm going to be doing a video on that next week, but I've got a challenge for you guys pertaining to wind link on field day, so stay tuned for next week's video. Now, in addition to the primary station, I'm also going to be using my everyday carry 2 meter uh, kit that I've put together, and I'm going to be utilizing it to run an APRS Digipeter while I'm at field day. Now, it won't be an eye gate because I won't be connected to the internet, so it will just digipeat those signals right around me from guys with HTs and get that uh, into the primary eye gate in our area. And for that particular setup, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use. It will either be a roll-up J-pole on a push-up mast, or I might decide to go ahead and use uh, my homebrew Yagi on that setup instead. I'll just have to kind of get there. I'll probably take both with me if the roll-up J-pole is working good enough on field day. I'll probably stick with that, and if it's not, we'll go ahead and move over to the Yagi and use it instead. To power the radios, I'm going to be using the 20 amp hour box that we built not too long ago on the channel as my primary uh, power station or power supply. And I'll be using the 10 amp hour Dakota lithium battery as a backup. And then I'll pair that up with a couple of different solar panels. I'm going to be taking both the top solar 60 watt panel and my power film 30 watt panel to fill day. So that should be enough to keep everything up and running. Now, let's talk about some upgrades that I've made this year to the RV that's actually going to help support me while at fill day. The first thing I've done is I've added a extra 100 watt solar panel to go along with the original 190 watt solar panel on the roof of the RV. I've then ditched the original uh, battery that came with the RV. That was a deep cycle marine style battery. I got rid of that and I've put in a new lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour battery in its place. However, I'm not going to be running the radios from the RV's power. They're still going to be powered from those two batteries I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. I may still utilize the RV's power to recharge some HTs overnight, just making it a bit easier for me. And since the power is there and available, well, hey, why not? Now, one of the other upgrades that I've made to the RV is some tank sensors for the propane tanks that's on the front. I've got two 20-pound tanks on front, but I never really had a good indicator as to how much was left in those tanks. Since I'm going to be using a small 
inverter style generator to run the AC unit during fill day, I need to know how much is in those tanks because the, uh, the generator is propane powered. And that is going to be a bit of a science experiment this year because I have never uh, kind of calculated out the exact runtime that I can get from one propane bottle while powering the AC. So it'll be an interesting field test during fill day. So what are my goals for this field day? Well, I've already mentioned I want to test that generator running the AC. I want to test this new solar and battery setup in the RV. And then for the radio challenges for the year, well, I want to make sure that I can post a Winlink position report. Then I'm going to query all of the stations around me uh, sometime maybe an hour or two after I post that position report. And I want to make a random contact through Winlink to one of those stations that's reporting nearby to me. That would kind of be a cool little experiment to see if I could get a contact over Winlink using nothing more than the position reporting feature uh, built into Winlink. I also want to make sure that I don't have any issues out of the APRS station uh, running that from the little 2 meter kit and I hope to make a lot of FT8 contacts. However, this year is going to be a little bit different for me because I don't want to focus solely on how many contacts I can make. One of the things I've neglected to do over the last few years that I definitely want to make sure that I do this year is I want to get out and visit as many of the other stations that's at our field day site and maybe get some footage of those stations and bring that to you guys here on the channel. But the number one goal for Phil Day is just to get out there and have some fun. Yep, I want to test some things. I want to make some contacts. I want to eat some fantastic food. But overall, I just want to have fun this Phil Day. What are your plans for Phil Day 2022? Leave it down in the comments below, and we will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3. Ooh, it's getting warm in here. Cut the AC back on. Well, let's see, you're one that likes to stick around to the very end of the video. So here's a little bit more kind of behind the scenes info for you. One of the features of the RV that I'm going to be using is called the Wi-Fi Ranger. Let me flip you guys around here. And that is this little box right here. Now, it doesn't look like much at first, but it is a pretty cool little item. Uh, the camper has a Wi-Fi system built into it. It's designed to allow you to connect to an internet source and then boost your signal so that you can connect to it here in the RV and have a better signal. However, I'm not going to be utilizing it with an internet connection, but I will be using it to connect all of the Raspberry Pis this year through that, and that way I can control them all from one central point. So it basically builds a network for me that I can use when we're out in the RV, and should be a really useful feature to be used on fill day. All right, this really is the end of it. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, 7-3.